Welcome back. You're still with Perspective, uh, and we're still talking to Philim Kain from a Human Rights Watch. Uh, back to the corruption thing. Mm. Uh, if, if I know I'm talking if, but yeah. if you had, uh, if you had, you say, what would you do with KPK? What what needs to be uh, improved in that in that area? You know, Human Rights Watch. You know, our our terms of reference don't you know extend to how government agencies right. can and should work. No, but, but what, let, what, let, let, let me rephrase okay. it. But no, Where I, are the witnesses? Uh, the weaknesses that you look uh, that you see in KPK? Here's what I would say. I, hear, I think this is the most important sort of general, you know, advice mm -hmm. that we could give. That is, a effective corruption eradication mechanism or agency needs to be absolutely independent. It needs to be fully supported by the government, and it needs to be immune from politicized attacks from any sector. And I think that if you're able to have that combination, then you have the foundation for an agency that can go forth and effectively uh, investigate corruption. Mm -hmm. It needs to be resourced, but it needs to, but it needs to be well resourced, it needs to be independent, but it also needs to be protected from attack. But, but that would imply like not no equality before the law because you would talk about something like uh, not impunity, but mm -hmm. uh, more or less better protection for KPK members. Uh, Legal protection. I oh think. no, I, I, I am in no way suggesting that, that representatives of any government agency, any the government agency, should be above the law. Right. It all should be equal before the law. Uh, you know, what I'm, just, what I'm saying is that any agency needs to be well resourced, it needs to be empowered to follow right. through, and it needs to be protected from how? politicized effect. Poli how? how? Well, again, going back to how do you, you don't need to sort of reinvent the wheel. You know, there are very effective anti-corruption mechanisms and agencies in places like Hong Kong, in mm -hmm. places like Singapore, who have gone through these sa the same the transition same and have been able to have real serious impact. Is it easy? No. Is it going to take some time? Yes. But there are examples that Indonesia can learn from in order to get through this. Mm -hmm. um, Talking about corruption, there is also lately it's become more pronounced mm. uh, the retroactive factor. Uh, do you think that's warranted, or should there be a limit, like for example, not more than five years, or right? Then you can drag it because, like I said, nobody's clean in sure. Indonesia. Um, or very few of them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to say that you should definitely talk to Transparency International or right. Indonesian Corruption Watch because they are much better versed in these types right. of issues. Right. You know, for us, you know, we see the knock-on effects of corruption that create human rights issues of many kinds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not just resource allocation, but it encourages rent-seeking uh, by, by, by the security forces, which might make them actively or passively complicit in human rights abuses. So. In terms of the mechanics, there mm. are agencies and individuals who do this 24-7, and I'm afraid I'm not one of them. <laughs> There's always a silver lining to, to anything, mm. to, uh, and including like we have corruption maybe, we have a... Uh, what is the silver lining in Indonesia, for example? Do you see uh, a better awareness uh, yeah. or a, a stronger, like, I don't know, social media or yeah. whatever? You know, uh, if you look at the record, even of the just pa of the past year, mm. there are things that have happened that are really encouraging in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. The first thing is that in July of 2014, mm -hmm. uh, the Indonesian parliament approved a mental health law, which will address the mental health crisis and help protect the, the, the rights mm. of people with mental disabilities. Mm. That's huge. The other issue I mentioned is that you know President Widodo has specifically gone on the record committing to investigating a spe specific number of disappearances from 1998. Mm -hmm. That's huge. The third thing is that over the past year or so, it's become much more uh, permissive uh, to talk about and discuss the massacres of 1965 and 66. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of this has come as a result of Joshua Oppenheimer's mm -hmm. documentaries, The Act of Killing and The Look of Silence. But you know, this is opening this Pandora's yeah, box exactly. of, of, of long uh, covered up evils that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And you know, another key issue that I think is that we need to recognize is that in January of last year, the Indonesian government signed an agreement with Saudi Arabia, which will protect 
the rights of migrant Migrants. workers from Indonesia. So, you know, there are good things. There are encouraging signs. And so that's the message that we want to give. Mm. There are encouraging signs. The government can make positive changes, they but it takes, it takes political more. will. And that's what we're looking for from President Widodo. Okay. Let's, let's continue this after this break.